Hey everybody, welcome to Bearcat Insider, and this is Basketball Report, week six. We got it right this time. That's right. I, I jumped the gun last week. Yeah, we caught up though. But we did, because time flows like a river, and you can't stop it. That's right. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting deep right off the bat. Oh, well, boy. I'm assistant coach Travis Marsh. I'm here with Pilot Point's favorite son, Chance Kirby. <laughs> hey everybody. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk a little Bearcat basketball. Um... We went one and one this week. We um, we were an away team this week. Uh, went down to Boyd and uh, we took the dub in Boyd America, and then we went up to Kalisburg and did not get the dub. And so uh, you didn't get to watch a game this week. I know I missed out on one. No top row center opinions. Yeah, so I do have some opinions, but well, I think, and this is something that you brought up. Actually, at my house last night, whenever you stopped by, um, we've had a wardrobe controversy in the past. Uh, I think it was number six. Number nine, I know that you can't even wear number six in basketball, so it couldn't have been him. We'll call him number six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know his name, but I, I'm not going to yeah. talk about him. Single-digit guy from Valley View with black leg sleeve and how that was a fashion faux pas. I, I was uncomfortable with it in my old age. Okay, so... Old man chance, whenever you are the number one leading scorer in Texas high school, can you wear a white leg sleeve? That is, that's when you can make a statement okay. because you are making a statement in your gameplay and your fashion sense can follow. But uh, I'm, the other kid had it out of whack. You can't sp- spend so much time on your fashion that you forget the fundamentals of basketball. Well, in fairness... Uh, Landon Condiff was the white leg sleeve at Kalisburg. He can wear whatever he wants. He dropped 37 points, which is the ta- aggregate total of, I think, Valley View's last three games. So I think he's entitled to wear, wear, he can wear a white leg sleeve if he wants to. Exactly. Or a green one. Yes. Long shorts, short shorts, doesn't matter. He, he's got the resume to back up his fashion choices. Yes, because when you make a fashion choice like that you're drawing attention to yourself and when you draw attention to yourself you want people to see you scoring points much like your sweatshirt today this is a jacket first of all <laughs> it's a zipper it's a quarter zip I buy, is that a full, yeah. it's a full no, it's zip, a full zip. Okay. it's right. a jacket it's, it's drawing attention to you it's a nice pattern you're wishing you were as warm as i was <laughs> Or I wish I could borrow it on a Friday night during a playoff game whenever I'm stupid short sleeve. Yeah, speaking of statements. But, um, yep, so we had, had a good week. So we're going to uh, get started with the Boyd game uh, whenever we get back from a word from our sponsors. Located in Pilot Point, Texas, the Chandler family has been making custom cabinets for over 40 years. As a team, Chandler Cabinets is committed to designing and building the perfect cabinets for you. They will make the process comfortable and stress-free by personally guaranteeing a superior product built on the standard of superior craftsmanship and immaculate customer satisfaction. From concept to completion, perfect form and function. Chandler Cabinets is an award-winning company with a reputation for consistent innovation at the highest level of design. You can find more information on Chandler Cabinets at ChandlerCabinets.net or on their Facebook page, Chandler Cabinets. Chandler Cabinets, 40 years of excellence. Hi, I'm Greg Pelzel. Here at Pelzel Printing, we do custom embroidery, custom screen printing, and promotional products. You can reach Greg Pelzel at 940-453-5443. Go back. So on Tuesday, we, uh, we traveled down to Boyd, and uh, the highlight of the trip was not the stop at Bucky's after the game. It was, however, the fact that we won the game 46-27. to Was there ever a bad trip to Bucky's? No, man. I ended up with a barbecue sandwich. and Some Bucky's underwear or something? No, no. I went with burnt peanuts okay. as opposed to Bucky's underwear. And gotcha. a couple Dr. Peppers, and I got my wife some candy so that I could go home a hero. And um, and victorious. Sorry to get victor- you off. Uh, a victorious hero topic. with that. Yeah. So uh, Bearcats took the dub 46-27. to 27. Um, You know, Boyd, they, they really, uh, they kind of, they, they used a uh, clock management offense. It was very similar to your love of the ponder football offense of, you know, we're just going to keep the ball away from you and then you can't score 100 on us. That is what Boyd used um, on, on the basketball court. 
So uh, if there was ever a need for a high school shot clock, this would have been the game for the Bearcats. Uh, we won 46 to 27. Uh, leading the way was Avery Smith with uh, 20 points, and then Rowdy followed up with eight, and Jay Cox uh, was had seven, uh, and Jay hit a. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did hit three of those actually, um, but a. Uh, you know, he, he he found his range, and he hit a three-pointer, and the crowd went wild. Um, all nine of them went insane, uh, and it was awesome. I was glad that Jay hit one. Um, but, no, it was, it was a good game overall. Uh, it was nice to see uh, Rowdy bounce back from a, a rough game offensively uh, the week before to being the second-leading scorer, and I know it's only eight points, but, you know, he's still the second-leading scorer. Um, Rebounding-wise, you have... Um, Hold on. I somehow magically changed my spreadsheet here. This is live coverage of yes. Coach Marsh reading his <laughs> stats on the computer. The freak out ensues. PowerPointBearcats.com. All right, and so uh, we had three people that had five rebounds each. He had Cade, he had Avery, and he had Ish, so we rebounded the wall well. But the weird thing is, is everybody on the roster got a rebound. I don't know that that's happened yet. Thanks, boy. So it's a first. Yes. Milestone. Uh, thank compliments to the Yellow Jackets. Um, and so, really, we played well in the glass. Uh, and then defensively, looks I'm like credit she, Coach Alling. I think he was really focused on rebounds this week. Uh, he was, you know, Coach Alling is our special teams coordinator, <laughs> and uh, he's our hype man. Actually, okay. Coach wow, Alling, <laughs> that explains a lot, right there. Yeah, Coach Alling's our hype man, <laughs> and so uh, you know, he hyped Jay up to the tune of four steals. Avery had three steals, and then uh, Jackson Baker hit the hit pay dirt with two steals to uh, to get on the leaderboards here. So uh, all credit goes to Coach Alling on that. Uh, we could not have played with the intensity that we did without him leading the way. Um, but I, I was impressed with our, our – we got on the road. Uh, we knew that Boyd was not going to be great, but you still have to go play. Uh, and I think we did a good job of uh, – we had some troubles early um, – when I say, well, you have to beat when the I, people you're supposed to beat. Well, that's the recipe. Uh, you, you know, beat the ones that you're supposed to, and then win a couple that you're not, and life goes on. But uh, you know, we, early hole, we were down four to zero. I was really glad to see our kids battle back. Um, but you know, Boyd, it's it's there's a common theme for two or three teams in our district, and their be two best players were a freshman and a sophomore, uh, and so they're young. But you just don't know what's coming, what the what you can mesh with together, uh, you know how they're going to progress. But they are young, so that does give them a little bit of hope for the future. So speaking of the future, let's take a commercial break and then get into the Callisburg game. And then when we come back with that, I think it's time to start talking about the playoff picture. Okay. At least we haven't done that all year, but uh, it's slowly approaching Q or Jim, quickly approaching. Q Jim Mora. Okay. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. We'll be right back. Since 1983, the Scott Walker Insurance Agency has been covering the insurance needs of Pilot Point. Regardless of what that need may be, they have you covered, offering homeowners, auto, life, farm and ranch, and commercial. Give them a call at 940-686-2692. That's Germania Insurance, the Scott Walker Insurance Agency, located just north of the town square at 211 Scott Lane in Pilot Point, Texas. Scott Walker Insurance Agency, always there to help. We want to wish our varsity cheerleader, Abby, a great senior year. Love mom, dad, and Michael. Puzzle Barbershop and Salon and Southern Junkies has been home of the Bearcats since 1973. Whether you are looking for a classic crew cut or the perfect game day outfit, we have you covered. We carry a few fan favorite brands including Hey Dude Shoes, Judy Blue Jeans, The Supply Clothing, and Orleans Candle Company. Come check us out on the north side of the square in downtown Paula Point or online at www.southernjunkies.com and that is junkies with a Z. And don't forget, go Bearcats! All right, thank you to those sponsors. We're back. Uh, we just finished up with the Boyd summary, and now we're going to jump right into Kalisburg, and things didn't work out so well on that trip up north to the river. No, you know, whenever we played them uh, at home, we played really well. Uh, 
the the kind of kid. He of course had a great game because he's a great player. He's yeah, but I remember Launchpad yeah, shut he him beat down. Him up. Yeah. And uh, you you look at some of the things that bounced our direction in the first meeting. You know, Avery hitting a half court shot. The uh, you know Avery he made his first two threes from Steph Curry range, and so a lot of the things that went our way the first time didn't go our way the second time shots that went in before didn't go in for us shots that he missed when I say he I mean obviously there's more people on the team than that guy but you know he's the main cog but shots that he might have missed at our place they they are uh, they went in on the home court um, he did a good job of, of getting to the to the basket and, and getting some second chance points for the for the Wildcats and so uh, you know we lost 75 to 54 what kind of crowd did they have is do they have any Rona restrictions? Was it? It did not look like any Rona restrictions were in place. So there me. were quite a few people there, in the house. The Callisburg uh, side was was full, um, but the you know the the kind of kid is a coach's dream because everything about him. If you were uh, an old school fundamental coach, would drive you insane because he'll pull up from anywhere past half court, and the the crazy thing is, is it goes in. And so you you have to allow some things about him. Just to, he has to be him. Uh, but the thing that I noticed, and the thing that was was interesting to watch, just I, I don't know how I ended up thinking about it. But when I was sitting there watching, he you know he drives in the lane, he dishes the ball out to the corner, and their guy buries a three. And there is nobody on that court more excited for that kid that just buried the three than Landon Condiff. He genuinely wants his teammates to do well. He doesn't want it to turn into this one-man show where he has to do everything, even though he's more than capable of it. He wants his teammates to flourish, and and that really stuck out to me as, as I was watching the game and then you know kind of processing things um, going forward. The reason I was asking about the crowd, I, I saw on Twitter that that is their first district title. Spoiler alert, we didn't win. It's his first district title there since the 1960s so 1964 if i remember correctly so i figured the crowd wanted to be a part of that especially playing pilot point as well you know and uh man that you know hats off to them coach reed's done a great job um and you know the the coach that was there before him kind of laid the foundation then coach reed's gone and and really taken off with that group uh and and they're more than one player i know landon condiff gets the gets the press and he deserve deservingly so but they are a uh, athletic, tall team that shoots really, really well and, and plays solid defense. Uh, and so I was, I was very impressed. Um, as far as stats go, Avery Smith scored 20, Rowdy Robinson 13, Ish Harris had 12. Uh, so we had good output from what's kind of turning into the big three. Um, you know, and then Dylan Gann will rotate in there some with, with that leading scoreboard. And then rebounding wise, uh, Ish was our leader with five, and then Jay and Rowdy both had four each. And so Rowdy is. Rowdy and Ish are both uh, in line for the trifecta here. And then uh, Rowdy Robinson led the way with one block and two steals. Uh, so it looks like Rowdy got the trifecta in the Kalisberg game. But, um, you know, the the thing that's frustrating, um, you know, a couple weeks ago we had the Whitesburg game, which I dubbed the most unbearcat loss uh, that I've seen. Um, and you, you go to this loss, and even though it's by, you know, 21 points, our kids played hard. They competed. Uh, but what's happening is we're, we're turning on each other so fast. I mean, we're uh, things will happen, mistakes will be made, and, you know, kids are gropping at each other and, and everything like that. And so we've made a concerted effort to try to address that with them, uh, not just at halftime of the game, but also, you know, going forward. Um, and it's, it's pretty cut and dry, in my opinion. Uh, whenever you are... I guess on on the next level down, you're not the boss. So if you're a player, the coach is above you. If you're a kid, the parents above you. If you're a worker, the boss is above you. There is no situation where that helps. Uh, and, and that's what I tried to to tell them at halftime: is man, it, it doesn't work as a player with a coach. It doesn't work with you know being a worker to a boss. It doesn't work with a husband and a wife. It might work with a wife and a husband. When it goes that way, I think that way is the more efficient manner. Um, but 
Just do what you're told. Well, exactly. I'm not going to say the that, path of least resistance. Yeah, you know, but, well, um, not you. I mean, just in, right in general. In general, yeah. in general, it's not going to work in a relationship. It doesn't work as a as a you know as a parent. That doesn't work. But you're saying that you they need to be a more cohesive unit. Absolutely, and that's a that's a life thing. That's well, not just a basketball thing or a football thing. That's a I mean that's a life lesson. In I know I'm sitting here as Coach Marsh, but that's a life lesson that I think really sports is a great way to teach it it's not the only way to teach it i know that there's other ways that teamwork can be learned and and things like that but you know that that's the thing about sports that that i value the most is it's preparation for real life uh even after you hang up the cleats and put up the basketball shoes and you know all those things you've learned lessons over the course of your athletic career that prepare you to be a better human being what's interested you ended up here I would say it's because of your extensive show prep, but I know you, so I know it's not. Yeah. You just complimented Kalisberg Star on how he supports his team and how you notice that during the game, and then now you're saying we need more of that. So yeah, it, and it it might have been one thing that you know all of a sudden I saw our kids fussing each other, and so I was kind of on high alert, and so then I noticed that he was doing it. Yeah, and uh, you know it, it's. It takes a whole lot more effort to be negative to people than it does to be positive, in my opinion. Because you can easily say nothing. And then you, it's really easy to say, out of boy or out of girl. But it sure takes a lot of energy to fuss. And so I, I just think that it's, it's one of those things where our kids need to reestablish the priority is not on trying to coach each other up, but how about you listen to the coaches and you try to do what the coaches are asking you to do. And when they mess up, you let the coaches be the ones that say, hey, do better and then how about whenever they make that three in the corner you're the first one that claps for them and says way to go on the court uh i, I just i don't know it, well, i think a, it emboldens another team if if one team sees another team quarreling with each other then that emboldens oh, the other team to be hey we got them go right at them we got them right where we want conquering them. yeah I'm, I'm yeah sorry i was about to go into story time but we're not going to you're welcome, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that uh, our kids played hard. They just didn't play well. Uh, and, you know, that's just part of it. That's going to happen. Um, I'm really glad that we haven't had to go back to that Whitesboro game and address effort. That's been a, a, a welcome, welcome change for a couple couple weeks now is that, man, our, our kids are playing hard. Uh, they are. Uh, are they playing well all the time? No. Are they making great decisions all the time? No. But they're playing hard. They're getting after it. And uh, But as we teased before that commercial break, the playoffs are – they're here. I mean, yeah. they're around the it, – it's time to bring all that together. There, we don't have – there's not enough weeks left well, to get this. Well, we'll get to it whenever we get to that segment. Um, but – the potential to peak at the perfect time is there. Because um, I don't think we've played our best basketball. And I know we haven't been the best team that we can be. And so there's still time to to get all that together, to get it going the right way. And then how awesome would it be to, to get it all together in this coming week with three games this week and, and get going the right direction looking into the playoffs. But uh, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors, and then we'll get back and we'll talk playoffs, and we'll talk the uh, Caleb Marsh Player of the Week. There is no better source for local news than the Pilot Point Post Signal. Pilot Point Post Signal has been covering Pilot Point since 1878, providing award-winning, top-notch coverage of Pilot Point and the Pilot Point Bearcats. You can start your subscription today by going to postsignal.com and signing up for their special, which is two months free of the digital and print copy, or you can call their phone number at 940-686-2169. The Pilot Point Post Signal, the best source for local news. Yeah, fans, one thing that I love about walking into the field house is looking at all the old pictures that you have from years past and being able to relive the history of those great teams and great players. And I love walking through with my sons and showing them a picture and saying, man, look at that guy and telling them a story about a great play. And you can have the same opportunity to do that with your family by using Ashley Marsh Photography to capture your family's great memories. Seeing those pictures of your family will allow you to talk to your kids or your grandkids 
methods and tell great stories about things that you've done or things that you've seen or just funny memories that you might have. So if you ever want to document your family's history, please contact Ashley Marsh Photography. You can find her on Facebook, on Instagram, using Ashley Marsh Photography, as well as her website, ashleymarshphotography.com. All right. Thank you to those sponsors. Um, so first, let's talk playoffs. Okay, so here's the... There's one magic thing that makes the playoff picture really, really easy. Win. Yes. Because if we win, there's no question about what's going to happen. But that's not fun to talk about. That Everyone wants to know, you know, you, you get brackets and you do all that. If the playoffs were today, where are we? Well, we'd be... Out because, that's why because we haven't we haven't played Paradise. If I don't know that, then I'm assuming. Yeah, we're, others we're, may not know. We're that. the odd man out right now. If okay. the season ended right now, and that is due to the fact that uh, we the, have three games. The next, this awesome week. superintendent in Paradise wouldn't play us whenever we shut down, which put us at one. We're one game behind everybody else. It's about the kids, Coach Marsh. It's about the kids. Is it? <laughs> Because when it comes to him, it's not about the kids for me. It's about him and my love of him. Uh, he has a kid that plays, by the way, uh, on JV. Oh. Hmm. Maybe that was why he was so worked up about the JV games. And he lost it no matter what. So, uh, Anyways, yeah, we yeah, Back to it. Sorry. All right, so Sir. the worst thing that w- – yeah, I know the worst thing can happen is we lose. Well, the worst thing that happens if we lose both Paradise games, because if that happens, we're done. Okay. Uh, we need to split with them at best. Do we know or anything at, about Paradise? So, Paradise is going to run. They're going to press you with a 2 2 1 press. They're going to settle back into to a real tough physical man type defense. And then they're, they're big on set plays. They're good. I mean, they're good. They're a good basketball team. Um, you know. If they have a basketball team, we can lose to them. Is, are we at full strength? We are at full strength. Uh, as of 3.36, Tuesday afternoon, we'll be at full strength. Okay. So, uh, I think, uh, man, I, I think we're 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 set to, to go on a run. Okay, so um, just to make sure I understand this, Calisburg's locked up number one. Calisburg's clinch. They there. There's no scenario where they don't win. Okay. Can we be number two? If we win out, we would have a chance. Okay. So we're going to be anywhere from two, three, four, or and there's going to be weird tie break situations sure. all the way through. Okay. But we there is potential for us to be everywhere from two to five. And those games that are this week are Paradise, Paradise, Whitesboro. So Paradise Tuesday night at home. Paradise Wednesday night away, varsity only. Valley View away on Friday, and then Whitesboro away on Tuesday. Okay. And so that will be uh, that. That's the the gauntlet. And so uh, you know everybody everybody makes the playoffs. It just it's when do your playoffs start? Uh, some teams it starts week one because they're playing for their life because they're they're just not very good. Um, our playoffs are, are kind of here. Uh, it's, it's tomorrow night is a playoff game for the Bearcats, and uh, so yeah, we'll we'll see. But I, like I said, I feel good about it. I, f- I feel really good about where we are and, and where we're going to be going. Um, you know, and and I th- I think like I said, it's it's ripe for the picking. And it's that game tomorrow that's boys and girls both here that'll be boys and girls both here it'd be televised on that's what YouTube i was gonna channel. get at it's gonna be on the youtube channel yes. starting at approximately six ish six ish and if it runs late or i can't imagine starting early if those of you at home just subscribe hit notifications and then when yes. it goes live you'll know and then it's mentioning the youtube channel and subscribing in the not so distant future we are going to start doing some things for subscribers only so if you want to be one of those people that doesn't miss something that's for subscribers only, hit the subscribe button. There you go. There you go. Heard it from the, the man himself. Now let's give us what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> all right. What we have set and listened to. So this. February 1st is National Dark Chocolate Day. All right. So this is the National Dark Chocolate Caleb Marsh Player of the Week. Okay. And we'll go to Avery Smith. 
All right, Avery averaged 20 points um, in both games. All right, he scored over 20, I think, against uh, Kalisberg. And then uh, he, was a, he was a constant presence on both ends of the court. And so um, Caleb Marsh. National Dark Chocolate Day. National Dark Day Chocolate Day Award. Player of the Week. Player goes of the to Week. Yeah. Avery Smith. Yeah. And um, put that on your shelf. Absolutely. Update the resume. Yes. The Those colleges, they want to know what awards you got. I'm pretty certain, even if someone's given Launch Pad a call or if it's football, it'd be no fly zone yeah. about possible playing college football. They'd still be very interested to know that he won the Caleb Marsh National Dark Chocolate Day <laughs> Award on February 1st, 2021. Absolutely. I mean, that might be worth one star. Um, or half. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's worth something. Um, <laughs> to us and that, Caleb. Uh, absolutely. I get a kick out of it every yeah. week. Well, I guess I'll see you in the stands tomorrow evening. Top center. Last time of the year. Darn it. <laughs> really enjoyed basketball this year. Well, you were there enough. You're I, invested. Yeah. I think I saw more games this year than I may have seen in the past five. Well, there you go. It's progress. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors, Pilot Point Post Signal, Chandler Cabinets, Ashley Marsh Photography, Pelzel Printing, Southern Junkies, and uh, last but not least, Dana Walker with the Germania Insurance. Uh, without the support of those sponsors, this podcast wouldn't be coming to you, and you wouldn't get to hear who the National Dark Chocolate Day Player of the Week was. And so uh, please go support those local businesses they like they support your local uh, sports teams. Yeah, go in there and tell them you listen to the podcast and that you appreciate them making this possible do it and get that 10 cents off from gretchen <laughs> talk her up to a quarter you can i'm yeah. sure she'll talk at least yeah all right and as always go, go bearcats, bearcats.